Yes, she, she did. did. Oh. I did because I was sort of worried about it getting too long. And since we're all here and I'm remembering, that's okay. That's my deal. Any of you that have watched my videos, sometimes you start about 10 minutes late. <coughs> there was still something on my midterm that he talked about that I still I can't put it together, but it's fine. Tell me what you can't put. To, I have no. notes. If there's something you're looking for, I will. I will, I will, can type up my notes. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna give you the answer per se, but I will type up that, my notes and send you my notes. Then I will do that Monday. Whatever. Sunday's homecoming at Marshport. I have Monday open. Okay. Don't tell anybody that because you know what'll happen. Mm -hmm. yeah. Of course. Ugh. <clears throat> Is the seventeenth enough time for you to get back to you in your sermon? <coughs> when are you preaching it? <coughs> I'm not. I wasn't gonna preach. They asked me to, to preach in Chris's absence, and I said no. I'm not ready. Okay. Oh, honey. Okay. You I can't to wait for that decision, but I think I don't want to preach that until. But she you, said but you, good you understand the main issues with that sermon. Oh, absolutely. Okay. It was not to do it all. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> she she wound all four scripture readings into a sermon. And I, I didn't know. I know, and that's that's. <coughs> that takes talent. Uh, that's what I said. I'm like, if you can do that, you got this down pat. I tried hard. <laughs> and, and your effort was your effort was admirable. It was just pushing it up some. <laughs> just from my knowledge, I, I talked to Andrew out in the parking lot about where he lives. Susan, you, you how often do you come to Charleston? Whenever I have a meeting, which probably for this, and this doesn't always meet here. We've met here six times, and we'll meet in the Lewisburg area three times. Um, but I come for staff meeting. I come for Christian educators gathering. Uh, occasionally for clergy women, for so presbytery right. meetings. I travel wherever they are. And how mm -hmm. how far is that from Lewisburg? It, to to where you're staying? No, from from here to your home. I don't know, but from where you're staying, I'm an hour, I'm one 115 miles. Okay. I just know because that's where the Presbyterian yeah. office was, and it's two thirty mm -hmm. round trip from okay. <laughs> Randy, where are you? I'm in Charleston. Live there, church there. Which home? Which church? Breed Breed Memorial. We have one of our sessions there actually. January, yeah. Yeah, January. And Sherry, where are you? I'm here in St. Albans. Okay. Randy. You put King Elizabeth on North Shore. She's, She's with I'm a Green. <laughs> okay. I live about fifteen minutes north of Charleston. Okay, Susan. I live about 60 miles south of here. I'm about 45, 50 miles south. Huh. <clears throat> we just had a family move, <clears throat> well, but maybe about four houses from us who moved here, moved there from Charleston. Mm. <clears throat> but they weren't part of a Pres the Presbyterian church here. The last name is Wilbur. Um, anyway, but they've, well, they haven't become us. Officially, but um, you know where the black church they meet is. It was a non denominational kind of church, I think, but I don't know which one. All right, <clears throat> sit back and listen. <laughs> baptized, <laughs> oh, oh. baptized <laughs> in the water, becoming a member of God's family. <clears throat> Why do you all have to just I'm cover? reading the author. Baptism is a beautiful, holy, mysterious gift. When water is poured on a person, when prayers are said, when songs are sung and promises are made, God's holy, invisible spirit hovers in the air, just like it did over 2,000 years ago when Jesus stepped into the waters of the River Jordan. That wonderful day, Jesus was baptized by a man called John, and something amazing happened. The heavens opened above, a white dove flew gently down, and God said, This is my son. I am pleased with him. Can you imagine God smiling that day? Baptized in the water, dove flies from above, Jesus in the river, covered in God's love. <clears throat> Ever since Jesus was baptized, Christians all around the world have chosen to be baptized too. And every time a baptism happens, God smiles and whispers, this is my son, this is my daughter, I am pleased with them. When we are baptized, 
It's a sign that we are part of God's great family. There are different ways to be baptized, but the meaning is the same. In baptism, we belong to God. The water makes us clean and new. Baptized in the water, a gift for me and you, a sign that we belong to God who makes us clean and new. Sometimes parents bring their babies to church to be baptized. They want everyone to know that their child belongs to God. The pastor sprinkles or pours water on the baby's head and everyone promises to love that little one and teach him or her about God. The baby will not remember that special day, but the parents will never forget it. Baptized in the water, <clears throat> we promise, sing, and pray. A little one's brought forward. It's baby's special day. Sometimes older children or adults decide themselves they'd like to be baptized. They might go right under the water. They want everyone to know that they belong to God. Baptized in the water, like Jesus long ago, God's Holy Spirit dances as waters gently flow. <clears throat> but you don't need to be baptized in a church. Some people are baptized in a river, like Jesus was, or in a lake, or even in an ocean. Baptized in the water, gathered by the lake, God hears our songs and prayers, each promise that we make. No matter where we are baptized, in a church, or a lake, or a river, what matters is that we are joined in one human family, and each of us belongs to God. Baptized in the water, held in God's great care, one family joined together, young and old, everywhere. Makes me emotional. <clears throat> no matter how we are baptized, whether we're covered by the water, or it's sprinkled, or poured, what really matters is that we're covered in God's great love and grace. When we are baptized, God's love pours over us, just like the water. God smiles and whispers, You are my son. You are my daughter. I am pleased with you. Baptized in the water, covered by God's grace, we are God's sons and daughters in every time and place. <clears throat> A baptism prayer. Dear God, Thank you for the meaning and mystery of baptism. Thank you that when we are touched by water in baptism, <clears throat> you reach down to cover us with grace and hold us in your love. Remind us that through the gift of baptism, we are one family, joined together around the world, across the years by one spirit, one faith, and one hope. We are your sons and daughters. We belong to you. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. <clears throat> now, what else do we need to talk about baptism after that? <laughs> Read it again. Read it again. <laughs> just like my three-year-old. Read it again, Dad. I'm not tired yet. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, <clears throat> let's let's go. Oh, so we're, I've got to refocus again. So we're talking about baptism, <clears throat> and as we talked about when we were talking about the sacraments uh, or sacraments in general, uh, we as <clears throat> Protestants claim baptism as one of two because of the Great Commission that Jesus said, go into all the world and be baptized and uh, teach. But before that, based on his baptism um, that of, in the River Jordan by John. Now what we'll talk about, uh, so this is an early 5th uh, century mosaic of Jesus being baptized. 
I, I find it, I don't know if you can see it, but um, isn't it fascinating how uh, in solid mosaics you can see Jesus <clears throat> under the water? Um, I mean, as you were talking about <laughs> art. I, I, that's beyond. See, and I think it's wonderful how it, in my perspective, shows the 12 disciples watching, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like almost like they're like over going, well, that's so cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in here, let's see. Oh, oh. Oh, 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 well, that's where I wanted to know. He's the guy on the left. He looks like Neptune. Yeah, I was going to say. That's all that man is fine. That's the keeper of the river? Yeah. Hold on. I can't see that. What's wrong? That's the next person in the bathroom. Hold, please. What's what's behind his neck, Erica? Like, what's he? Which one? This guy? Yeah. Yeah. So he's holding like a reed, right? One of those, like, Moses fluffy cattails. Moses. And I can't really tell. There's like a, I don't know, almost like a canteen type thing. Oh, like a wine skin, probably. Yeah. Oh. That, that makes more sense than what I said. Of course, the dove, and then there's water coming down. Yeah, but notice he's got something on his head. I was just going to say that. Say it looks like fire. Uh, does it look like fire or a crown? I guess it would depend on the where he wore a crown in those days, because it's not on his head. But huh. So we see John because of John's yeah. wild clothing, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. And then uh, we see the dove coming oh, down. Yeah. Is that an angel? I, I, I dove just, just wonder dove. if it's not God. The yeah, Father. Right. I don't know. And I wonder if going off kind of the Moses thing, it could represent the staff and uh, the thing to carry manna. Mm. Just, well, I was just thinking the cattail being more like the uh, sea of reeds. Mm, maybe. Yeah. So in the next one, you'll see um, who, who's here. <coughs> well, John again, yeah. but he's a little more cityed up here. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he's got a brass <coughs> or, uh, uh, cross. Mm -hmm. And Jesus isn't in the water. <laughs> No, it's being poured the, over his yeah, head. Yeah, poured guy, on that's him. not supposed to be Jesus, is it? Because I'm thinking yeah. of the road to. No, no, no. This no, is the guy with Jesus. The, no, this is the baptism of Jesus. Yeah. So water is being poured on him. <coughs> and two angels or two children? It must be angels because they've got the. Halos. 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 Mm -hmm. So this is quite a bit later. Mm -hmm. But so <coughs> we. Um, yeah, so Jesus is the Great Commission, baptism of Jesus and John. But what we need to remember or need to know is that even before Jesus' baptism, there were precursors of Christian baptism. So we know from just reading about Jesus' baptism that, um, that there were people being baptized mm -hmm. before Jesus, long before Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know what John was doing. Part of what he was doing. Right, I mean, right, and it was John the Baptist. Right, uh, uh, right. Um, but he, John, we think and believe that John was not the only one out there doing baptisms. That it was kind of an uh, uh, an everyday thing. Uh, so baptism, there are precursors to Christian baptism. One of them is uh, circumcision, uh, and that that's an outward sign for a man to be included in the covenant community. Now, would they actually, at that time, it wasn't just babies, right? It would be full-grown men that changed into Christianity? They were not becoming Christians. They were becoming part of the people of Israel. They, they, but to ha make that happen, the sign was to be circumcised. But this was before Jesus. Yeah, this, that's why they couldn't be Christians. Duh. Good point. This was before Jesus. But, and they would do this in front of everybody? Well, um, I don't think so. Um, well, because by, by that time, really, it would have been the, the babies. Yeah, yeah, for sure, stuff. babies. Yeah. But, but well, as we'll see in a second, um, well, we'll get there in a second, but 
that uh, as a, a part of the what we would now call the Jewish tradition at that time, was there were ritual washings. So every time that you became defiled from touching a dead body or menstrual flow once a month, there was a, a ritual washing to become clean again. And some Jewish sects still do that. Yes, yes, for sure. Here or in Israel? Everywhere, Here. everywhere. Really? Yeah, Here. yeah. And uh, so even then and now, to become a Jew now, there's a washing of... Uh, uh, um, to become a Jew now and then. So if you, if you converted from another tradition or whatever. Um, so, what is somebody going to say? So John the baptizer and others were baptizing in preparation for the coming of the Messiah. It was a spiritual washing. So it's not that Jesus invented bapt baptism. In fact, Jesus did not invent baptism. It was already there. Yeah. The personification of the River Jordan. Interesting. It's mm -hmm. the Greeks. I was right. It was Neptune. Yeah. <laughs> it, uh, huh. so it was the Greeks. The picture of the River Gods. Interesting. Yeah. Huh. Oh, because at that time they worshipped yeah. the many. So, real briefly, uh, in fact, maybe we won't even. Uh, what do you know about your baptism? When, where, how, who, and why? Uh, so growing up Baptist, they led me to believe that I needed to be uh, baptized uh, routinely. So I can remember being baptized on four separate occasions, I think at least three of which were in the creek. Um, uh, ranging ages from like eight to uh, I don't know, 12. Um, and so I was never like really in church a whole lot, but just like in spurts. So it's always like, oh, Brother Andrew, you've been out of church for a while. You're going to renew your, you know, your, your baptism. Oh, hey, swimming from the song. Let's go. Um, so four times. Oh, yeah. So like going to <laughs> confession as a Catholic in that little box, maybe? I'm not saying I understand it. I'm saying that I was a kid and my parents weren't super there in terms of, boy, here's what you do. My family was a bit dysfunctional back then. So I guess I was trying to find another family, probably. Um, mm. so they might have gotten settled into the Presbyterian church and this has come up <laughs> and I'm like well, take your pick which time but no I couldn't tell you the dates and, and all that oh. some people have really profound um, stories and I love that for them mm -hmm. and each instance of it in some way was meaningful for me but it was equally as confusing mm -hmm. because wow. you, this is, that's, you need to, that's all you need to write all that down that's mm -hmm. that's great reflection on what you've where you've been. I mean, it all of that. It makes sense if that happened in the Baptist church because a lot of Baptists believe in the concept of backsliding. Yeah, so yeah. If you go out into the world yeah. and you backslide. Yeah. You need well, to well, rebaptize to wash away your sins. Well, yeah. remember what we talked about um, with sacrament and mm -hmm. sacramentality and the difference between sacrament and ordinance. Right. And in the Baptist tradition, you know. That they're calling for Andrew to do that for him to show something that right. he has done, where he has been and where he is now. Right. It, it's not so much about what God has done in the baptism or that baptism is a sign of what God has done. It's much more about show us what you got kind of a thing. Yeah, I, I had my, one of my neighbors said, well, I can't be baptized yet. I still have a lot of sinning to do. Huh. And I was, he's like, I'm not done. I'm not ready to stop. What? Like, why wash away my sins? And, the, and I tried to explain that's not how it works or that's not how I believe it works. You know, that's not what it really means, yeah, type yeah. of thing. But, but, yeah, that was the mentality of, mm. of it. How about anybody else? Anybody not remember their baptism? Cradle Presbyterian. <laughs> I was like I seven. was two, but it was in the newspaper. Huh. Aww. Aww. And it was December of 1960, where my parents went to church. They had a really good friend whose daughters were also twins and had the same names we did. Oh. Um, George somebody. Um, and I think George Webb did, was the minister, because he was the pastor of the church. But it's it fascinating because, I mean, this was Knoxville, Tennessee. And now it's a lot bigger now. 
but to have that in the newspaper. <laughs> well, I mean, I, but I, yeah, uh, but that's why a certificate is is important, or or a bulletin, or right. you know, nowadays a, a video. Um, Susan, what were you going to say? I was, I guess, I don't know exactly how old. Uh, infant in arms. I've seen <laughs> pictures uh, of them, you know, after church with me. Hmm. The minister was Arnold Poole. I know that. I was a few months old. I was at Green. It was in our mm -hmm. sanctuary. Mm -hmm. I was seven, and it was unseasonably very cold in October. <laughs> <in Fresno. laughs> oh, no. And usually for Halloween, you could wear those if you want to do a skimpy costume. Uh -huh. like, there, you could wear that at that time if you wanted to. Um, and it was 1980, December, October. And uh, either my parents forgot or whatever, because there was no font that day. I don't know if it broke or whatever. So we had to go out to the church pool, and I wore some other girl's dress, because whatever the dress I was wearing was too schmancy. It was really cold in there, and then the skirt went up. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> and so I'm like, I've always been very modest. Don't show my friend you. Um, but I remember them saying it was going to get canceled because the font was broken. And then they decided to go outside. I was bawling and crying when they said I couldn't do it. Aww. I knew what it meant to me. Yeah. Why did the church have a pool? Because they also had like a K through 8 school. Huh. So that would be part of PE. Oh, wow. So it was a real pool. pool. Wow. Yeah. Really? It doesn't work anymore, but it's a yeah. full size yeah. pool. Huh. Used I to was work. baptized a couple times, like Andrew. Really? Just, just different denominations that believe different things. Yeah. Scared into it one time. Yes. Because if you don't get baptized, you're going to hell. Yeah, and they don't believe you <laughs> so because what, you were baptized somewhere else. Yeah. What was your first baptism? As a Catholic, as a little. When a I was baby? Catholic, yeah. And then Baptist, and then Church of Christ, and then Baptist again. And yeah. I don't even remember how many. <laughs> wow. I thought of one more thing I wanted to share because it occurs to me this is a little funny. When I was a kid, uh, one of the people that baptized me, I thought his name was Algae, like the green stuff. <laughs> but now as an adult, I'm reflecting, and I, I recall that his name is I.G. Obrigo. Mm -hmm. And he was a white dude. Like, who names their kid that? <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to look at just a couple pictures to help us think about and talk about um, different ways of baptism. That's me. Oh, there's Susan. That's me. <laughs> you're <a> cute <laughs> So what a what a Pentecostal. That is not what we are. Presbyterian person <laughs> wear a robe like that? Oh, maybe, probably not. Um, so, but remember that one slide of Jesus being having water poured over. Mm -hmm. That's what's happening here. The uh, the the guy has a shell in his hand, mm -hmm. using that um, to to scoop up water. Now, let me ask, please, does the shell have any significance? Because I, I had one of my kids baptized uh, when they were pretty little, and the minister just used his hands. Mm -hmm. And I would think, if I'm ever called upon to do that sort of thing, I probably would too, but I don't believe that. It kind of makes it a little more personal. Is there any significance to the shell? No. Fantastic. Okay. Um. He was baptized in the Baptist church. <laughs> yep, I've been in one of those. I still have my pictures from I'm not even going to ask the same question. Go over it. Are we allowed? We're allowed to do that, right? Yeah. The difficulty is finding the baptismal pool to do it in. Yeah. But when I was in New Mexico, we had a parents that wanted their seven year old child baptized, and we went to the neighboring Church of Christ. No, we've done that. We partnered with a non Presbyterian church. Uh -huh. Uh, but also, we've used the river here, mm -hmm. there in Huntington. Oh, uh, uh, oh what you mean, Jay? <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, there is, uh, we, we baptize by pouring, sprinkling, or immersion. Um, though I, I think sprinkling is the lesser of the three. Um, but if you had, we're doing a visitation, I think that would be appropriate. Well, we'll talk about that. But um, <laughs> We're an immersion type bad. baptism. Yeah, but I mean, it can happen in a lake. Um, I know of a church uh, that uses a, 
um, uh, watering trough. Yeah. Uh, like you get yeah, a yeah. tractor supply. We had a group do that yeah. because we don't have a baptism uh, at my church. So there's a recovery group that had used our church regularly, and they would just bring a pickup truck with one of these tubs in the back yeah. of it. They'd pull up the water, dump a bunch of people, and call it a night. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> You're not baptized until I can hit the thing with the box. The no tape. <laughs> we tried to get one of those for the block party as well, too. Sorry. No, I, no, we're we're good. <clears throat> I like that picture. That was, that was I like a lot of fun. And that one guy is very happy. That that's after the noun. That's the up part. <laughs> that's that's after yeah. the noun. That's <clears throat> <clears throat> so er, early on. Uh, this is a, a slide from um, Syria in the year two thirty two, um, but <clears throat> this was excavated. And it's a house that's been modified to be used as a church or as a meeting place. And uh, so what would happen is they would use basically the biggest room, which was often the dining room, uh, in the center to be, um, uh, I mean, over on the left for the, um, for the preaching part, if you will. But over on the right, a part of the house was... Uh, carved out or made into a, a pool uh, or a font, um, and that uh, arrow is pointing to a, um, a, a plaster uh, a picture of <laughs> Jesus being baptized. Oh, I thought it was a fire truck. <laughs> no, no. Like, that's convenient. The water would be warm. So we're looking at just different fonts for a few slides. For instance, this one is from uh, Ephesus. So at the at either end, there are steps going from one end, uh, then you go down into, and then out the other end. Oh, okay. And then from Cyprus, a very early um, hole, font, pool. Notice the steps going in. This one is round. Has anybody ever been to visit something like that? It might be fabulous. I have not, and I, and I actually have never been to the Holy Land, and I think um, that's not going to happen anytime yeah. soon. Probably not. Our pastor just got back from there. Thank oh. God. Whew. But anyway, um, he went and he did the reaffirmation of his baptism in the Jordan, like everywhere oh, wow. So many. It was so cool. Yeah, I was on a trip in Greece, and we were at um, Philippi, and um, the same thing had an amazing uh, mm -hmm. baptism renewal there. Um, so from the very early days of the church, um, there was a pattern of initiation, and Andrew used the word a while ago about um, being initiated into a fraternity, uh, like a college fraternity, and that initiation is um, a startling word to use to talk about the church, but basically that's what is happening, is that people are, and this is, remember, uh, people were not necessarily baptized as infants, but were converted, and there was a period of instruction, could be a year or more, uh, which is mostly how we have our period of Lent now, because Lent and uh, Lent was the culmination of that instruction, and then the prime time for baptisms to take place was on the night before Easter Sunday morning. Oh, wow. So between Good Friday and the first uh, morning service of Easter, and that's when baptisms primarily took place in conversion. And as a part of that baptism, there was anointing with oil, with the laying on of hands. And the first thing that the person did after baptism was to then take communion for the first time. I wish we 
Well, what we have done here in our American Presbyterian tradition is we've separated all that out. So baptism, not always, but Susan was baptized as a baby. And then nothing happened until... Um, I was 10. Until you were 10. And back in, mm-hmm. back in the day, mm-hmm. um, kids were not allowed to take communion until they'd mm-hmm. had their instruction, maybe mm-hmm. catechism. Um, and then there was a... A lot of times we didn't call it first communion, but that's, a base, that's basically what it was. Because... We had to reach the age of reason, whatever that age of reason is. Do you have to be 10? Does your mom decide who decides? Well, this is Susan's area of of formation and education. But, I mean, the history of the Presbyterian church is, and Protestant church, and even Catholic church, is that you have to reach the age of reason. Well, who determines when that age is? Yeah, we call it the age of accountability, same idea. Right, but you can think for yourself and understand why you're doing it, which is when we believe that you get baptized too. Which is not un- unlike our, right, yeah, our yeah. Jewish friends with bar and bat mitzvah. I mean, they at a certain age, at 13, they become a son or a daughter of the covenant when they become responsible for who they are. And the same kind of thing happened with us. Um, and, um, and fortunately, we've kind of recovered uh, putting it all together um, for, for the most part. And so confirmation now is, is not so much um, a graduation of, of having learned a whole bunch of certain stuff, but uh, a, a confirming that what, was, what happened at baptism is, yes, I do believe that. Well, and that's why, the, I mean, the distinction of calling a communion's class. Because you couldn't commune until you had the class. Calling it communion class? Communicants. C-O-M-M-U-N-I-C-A-N-T-S. Gotcha. Because it was related to communion at the table. So you would take that as a kid? Or is that an adult class? No, most churches had that. I was 10 or 11. I was was upper elementary. And now that's why they call it confirmation. Mm -hmm. Because you're not communing at the table. You're confirming the vows that were taken on your behalf earlier. And we had that little pink catechism book. Did you have that? I did not have to memorize the catechism. You did. The, the Shorter Catechism for Children. Yes. Well, so that's what catechisms, um, so in our Book of Confessions, we have the Shorter Catechism, um, and that's what they were. They, they were developed for instructional materials for children or converts into the faith of a question and answer, and it was like mm-hmm. the Sunday school curriculum of the day. Um, what is the chief end of man? To give God glory and enjoy God forever. Um, I didn't grow up Presbyterian, so I didn't uh, have to learn that. But. First question is, who made you? God. Yeah, yeah. And that's the children's oh, that's category. that's the children's version. Yeah. Uh, okay, we have a little pink children's okay. version. Yeah. So, but you see how we, what was done was stretched out over 10, 12 mm-hmm. right. years. Mm-hmm. Oh, I hope I don't get myself in trouble. Well, more my wife, because I'm buying a drum set when this is happening. But uh, our three and eight year old have done that. Have what? It is up to parents to what age they want to have their ch- children baptized. No, 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 take communion. Um, so. And that too is up to parents. Everybody mm-hmm. is welcome at the table. That's a change. Because we went mm-hmm. from okay. you have to go through yeah. communicants class to be at the table to the early 70s, baptized children were welcome at the table. Now everyone is welcome at the table. So that's what I understood. I was looking for some verification, and you did not hit me. <laughs> so, but the thing that the thing that we should all hear is that the session is responsible in the life of a local church for making sure that children are um, instructed and prepared for communion. Yeah, my wife and I do. I mean, I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but like we're very hands on with the. Yeah, the faith walk of our kids, and they're they're into it. And I don't anything about your session, but thank goodness that you and your wife are doing that. Well, because some sessions throw a book at you, share a book with the family. Mm-hmm. Some have four week course mm-hmm. on uh, uh, learning more about worship and communion, including baptism and communion. Mm-hmm. Some might have a one two hour session in the afternoon on 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 the sacraments. 
And some might not have anything. Right. I was thinking that was the throwing the book at them. Because there used to be a really good book called, I don't know what it was called, published by the denomination like 20 years ago. Yeah, I, I mean, if I could, um, yeah, the denomination could do a better job of giving us those kinds of resources now. Um, but they're I mean, cutting back even more. Uh, a simple book like this um, is, you know, everything that everything you need to know about baptism is, well, not everything, but it's a good start. You just, what is it, Prego? Is it Prego or Prego? Oh, I don't know. That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> All right, some more fonts to get us thinking and looking and uh, talking oh, about baptism. That is beautiful. So this is medieval English, and this is also medieval. Now, what, remember what we were talking about, about, uh, and about the water becoming almost magical and people taking yeah, it home and, and, and stealing it. So uh, covers became very much a part of, of the font uh, with padlocks on them to, uh, to protect the water. So, and these people had access to regular water somewhere, right? But they thought that the holy water would yeah. be magical. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, there were common uh, fountains and wells in, in, in the town. Mm -hmm. This looks new, but it's actually 12th century. That one looks creepy. I like that. Do you, I think of like oh, movie, yeah. like one chicken feet or something. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I like it. Yeah. it. Even though the next one is... Post-Reformation, look at the cover on it. Wow. Wow. What the spire is happening there? It's <laughs> <laughs> full of spires, by the way. It's like hooked hook to a pulley up there? Yeah. That's what I was going to say. You have to have, have, to have it on a, a, yeah. a chain oh, yeah. or a rope or something. <laughs> That's wow. incredible. I'm not sure what the same thing. Hopefully it moves. Hopefully it moves. Hopefully it moves. Hopefully it moves. Yes, yeah, some churches would like to have a steeple that day, right? Right. Wow. It's very discomforting whenever you see the ceiling around the dome start. I think that it. could be distracting. Like, well, depending on where the pulpit was. This is also post Reformation, just in an old little old country church. Notice the fire extinguisher. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I love like that fire. Door. Is there a fire extinguisher? Oh, but they had fire. Don't don't. Doesn't your sanctuary have a fire extinguisher in it? Not in the sanctuary, no. There's, no? There's, I think it's a very large church, so we have several of them I around. I bet there's one around there somewhere. Not in the sanctuary. I mean, if you're going to light candles for Christmas Eve, you need to in the sanctuary. <laughs> <laughs> Tuck it away. That sounds like experience to me. Yeah. This is actually Bruton Parish Church in Williamsburg. Oh, yeah. Well, that's pretty, too. And this one is in... Pittsburgh at Shady Side Presbyterian Church. Ooh, go Pittsburgh. How is it that neither one of my churches have one? What? I mean, neither one what of do my you churches. Bat what do you use for baptism? In Comfort, we'd go to the river. Okay. I have no idea what they do at um, Marsh Fort because we haven't had one. Because yeah. the churches I've served have had like a bowl they sit yeah. out. Yeah. We have a I stand where a couple bowl sits in it. We don't have one of those either. It's a big old popcorn bowl. The Dollar Tree. Uh, this one, uh, look at it. Mm. Wait, what? How yeah. does that go? Can you? Uh, my eyes can't see. I see a gate. So the water's below it? Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. pretty. It's beautiful. Mm. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Is that one they could run, probably? Yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. So that one is, uh, notice that it's at the entrance of the church, as is this one. Mm -hmm. So it's at the door of the church, oh. as opposed okay, to... Because okay. remember, we're thinking about baptism as initiation. It's the way to get into the church. Uh, and so um, it's a constant reminder that through our baptism, we are made part of the body of Christ. There's a new... Um, uh, relatively new Catholic church in Frederick uh, that has 
um, they've done an incredible job. Um, but when you walk in the door of the worship space, there are two walls of water uh, mm -hmm. just running all the time. Uh, it's just incredible. And you walk through the walls, you walk through the water, you know, Red Sea, Moses, yeah. the whole thing. Um, uh, Did you remind you reading your Bible or just praying in there quietly? Yeah, so this one obviously is a recirculating. Um, the water comes from the bowl and into the pool. So it can be used for a, 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 you know, baptism like what we would probably be used to with in a font, but it can also be used for immersion uh, there as well. That one's awesome. It is incredible. So I thought it would be good to have them all up there. Eric, one of the books, Signs of God's Love by Gene Fogel. That was the one. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that yeah. Um, my guess is that's probably out of print. Well, there are some. This says paperback is five seventy one. Amazon. Amazon. Can you share that link? And to it our... may be that they're all. It may be that they are. There's sixteen of them that are used. So look at this one. Notice this one. I think they're all used. Now I don't want to go. I don't want us to. Uh, yes, stop sign. Get that out of your system. That's not what we're talking about yeah, here. Don't think about it. Um, <laughs> um, so just don't, we're not talking about that. But how many sides is it? Eight. No, how many sides? Eight. 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 So m almost all baptism at baptistries are eight-sided if they're like that one. Why? That one. Now I'm going to go home and look at our stand for we'll a couple of hours. Um, so, eight is the number of completion, seven days in the week, but on the eighth day, resurrection. On the new day. Yeah, that one I think is doable for a lot of us, right? Yeah, if you can find you that can, bowl. You can roll it out there. Yeah, so the problem is, um, again, draining it. Mm -hmm. yeah. But if it sits there long oh. enough, it will evaporate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Unless it's here. Unless After it gets green. That's right. Yeah. Unless the bowls are usable. Yeah, I guess the bowls are usable. Yeah, but that's heavy. Yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> Put a big silly straw on it. Ooh, that's great. Now, look at that one. How many sides? Yeah. Does it also look like anything else to you? Coffin. Coffin. Yeah. So, um, back in one of the early ones we had that we looked at, a really ancient one, it was round. Mm -hmm. which is often when a, a baptistry pool is round, it is um, uh, a sign or a reminder of we are born out of the womb of God. Mm -hmm. And uh, in that womb, we are given new life. This one clearly looks like, mm -hmm. which is Romans 6, which is the chapter, New Testament chapter for baptism. We are we are buried with Christ in our death and raised to new life in resurrection to our baptism. I was really surprised at the, the Gilbert Church because I preached there Sunday. And when I first walked in, I thought, I have a baptismal font. But then when I looked closer, what they have, and I'm not making this up, Looks like a candy dish. Mm-hmm. Well, that's what we have. That's what somebody stole from the church I served. <laughs> well, because not this one, but old stone. Yeah, yeah. It, about this high, about this mm -hmm. round, and I thought, okay, hmm. that's your thing. I happen to love this one because I think it's. Um, I, I I would like that. Um, it, it also overflows and circulates oh. and drains. Mm. I'm just not a fan of it. 
I didn't even, I mean, I didn't even get into it. I didn't notice the color, but put black dye in it, ruin everybody's clothes. You nerd. Mm. Again, notice it's at the back, the entrance. Mm. No, I noticed that's called negative edge. So, you know, I was, something just came in my feed the other day about pool designs, and yeah. what that means is it looks full, and it is full, uh -huh. but when it splashes over, it's not going to go, it's going to go, in between, there's, there's, a, there's a little crease. Okay. You, you see that? Right. Oh, it's, okay. Not gonna, it's not going to flow out on the floor. Right. Yeah. Although some pooling oh. of water on the floor is normal and, uh, what does it say in there? Yeah, I've read that. Yeah. Normal and um, shoot <sighs> fart poop. So okay. I say that desirable. You might yeah. say that word. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. So this one, we're back to the round shape. Mm -hmm. The font, the womb. Notice there are two sections to it, yeah. like that other one. That, like over on the left, you can stand at it and use and baptize somebody by pouring, hmm. or you can go down into it. Hmm. Is the left supposed to look like the fish? Could look like a fish, right? Yeah, but then you said womb, and I thought ovary, so now it's done. You've got to get rid of it. Oh. So we don't like that image, but. Um, uh, one of the early, some of the early prayers of the church talk about baptism being the womb of God. Um, and there you have it. No. <laughs> well, if you're desperate, if that's what yeah. you got. <laughs> well, I would have to take the secret. If you're desperate, you, you get a large cup out of the sink, and you got. I mean, yeah, you, yeah, because how would you get in and out of that? Well, well, so we're going to spend some money on that. Long. That wouldn't be terribly cheap. So this one is a pulpit, Baptist, a Baptist pool, a baptistry pool, and communion table all in one. Right. So the lid comes off of that. Yeah. Um, okay. This is how tiny houses got started. Right. <laughs> Do this first. Tiny house. Yeah. That's exactly it. I get it. And here we have the portable baptistry grand package. <laughs> now, my guess is there, look, this has got a pump, filter, the mm -hmm. whole bit, uh, mm -hmm. planters for some seasonal flowers. Portable. Um, my yes. guess is there's a, there are churches, non denominational churches, that probably pull in something like this or even that other one that just scares the bejeebies <laughs> out of me like this. <laughs> you just throw well, somebody okay, in the bathroom. Okay, <laughs> one high heel, one high heel or. Yep, yep. A uh, dumb service dog. Service. <laughs> 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 that reminds me of people cool if you were having a revival and, and like hundreds of people yeah. showed up. It'd be kind of cool if he was out, you know. And then this one probably looks familiar to you. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's, that's what we have. have. That's what we have. That's, that's what we have. I guess it is the same size. Very much like ours. Go team. Different See, and we only have the bowl. See, and there's evaporated. Look at all the rings. We have an old um, cup of like um, frosting, like Mrs. Butter, not Mrs. Butter, whatever. Icing, frosting, yeah. Betty Crocker. 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 Uh, and it says happy birthday, and I guess how old well, you are, you're supposed to put the money in there, so I'm on top of the full thing. But I would, seeing that, from experience, after you baptize, you need to empty the bowl. I have one that looks Does like that. Does it turn empty if you don't? And no, it like, turns light. Well, yeah. Yeah. And, oh, the yeah. Yeah. and it does get it eaten. Yeah. Yeah. Now, our bowl is copper. That one doesn't look copper to me. This looks like this so is this is not mine in, in Frederick, but um, but it looks very similar. Yeah. And you just pull that bowl out. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. Ours is like that. Um, it could be a mixing bowl from the kitchen. <laughs> I have a question, a and this may sound silly, but... No silly questions. You know, some people are germaphobes, kind of like me. Okay. In the Baptist church you got baptized at, they had, like, a drainage system. So what about these fancier baptism pools that we've seen? Do they have filtration systems if the water stays in there and stuff? Yeah, those big ones? The, the one, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, they, I was going to say, I don't want to bathe. They were. I mean, those churches were designed with mm -hmm. that, those yeah. baptistries. 
to uh, have like pool filters yeah. oh, and stuff. Yeah. Okay, oh, I was yeah. gonna say that's kind of oh, gross. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if they've switched over to salt instead of chlorine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. like the laundry. So I want us to look at this yeah. and then go to this, which is not the same one, but it very well could be, it's right? Beautiful. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. Um, and I've tried and tried to, but, but one of the things you have to worry about is height. So, you know, this is a certain height, and then when you put this on it, it raises it up. So somebody short like me is going to have to get a step to uh, hold the baby there. I like how that not only incorporates the water, but incorporates God's nature and creation and the beauty of creation, too. Yeah. Or, and here's what I thought about, you know how the running water washes the rocks? Mm. Or the rocks in the water. Mm -hmm. thing. That, that looks I, like a big salad bowl. I, I, I happen to love that. I, but again, I think the height is a, could be an yeah, issue. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but if you, if you have a woodworker, I think a woodworker could do that, mm -hmm. right? Oh, I think so. And I think a, a woodworker could actually take what you have and cut it, make well, it make shorter. Make it step, but um, out. Cut it? I mean... <laughs> No, that's like, you can't you hear the session? Yeah. What do you mean, cutting? Yeah. No, no, no. Just, just do yeah. it, and then, then, then they'll figure do it. Out. And then Are there the bubbles on the flat? Oh, no. uh, like bath bubbles is what I mean. No, no, no. Just Those water. are just drips. Uh, so well, I, I had some a couple videos for us to look at, but I don't know that we can figure out how to do that. Um, maybe I can just. Um, no, it's getting them on. Just try it, see what happens. So, would a hot spot do it? Yeah, I don't yeah. think so. So, while we're tri figuring out the hot spot, this is an Eastern Orthodox baptism. So, this is Russian or Greek or Ukrainian Orthodox. Um, so, do I have to do something to get my computer on for that? Hold on, you just have to do the hot spot. Have you got a little bit of a hot spot? Yeah. We'll come up, Susan Short Cable, I'll come. Well, while we got like a quick break, that book that I put in our chat is a book that a uh, Catholic friend of mine told me that she read when she was younger. It's, um, I'm planning on buying one, just to have one in my library, but like, if you ever end up talking to somebody who's not a Presbyterian, they wouldn't know more about it. Apparently this book is a really good, easy, approachable resource. And it's only like $11. So if we're having this class, specifically this class, in our second year of the ALP program, and not everyone continues on to the third CP year, does that mean that ALPs can baptize Mary and perform no. funerals? So no. is this information purpose only? The, no, the purpose of this is the communion, because ALPs with this course can be authorized for Right. It used to be that this was a level three course. Oh, okay. And so then those that didn't go all the way through level three would have to sit in on this course so they could be authorized if they wanted to. Okay. Because I was thinking, why not? Why wouldn't you say like baptism and marriages for the third year? It just made sense to do them all sacraments together. Gotcha. And then originally it was weddings and then we threw in funerals because otherwise we Okay. Because. <laughs> Yeah, Pastor Chris asked me, he's like, why are you guys doing marriages and baptisms? Are they going to let ALPs start to do that? And I said, I don't think no, so. But you cannot do baptisms, you cannot do baptisms. That's what I thought, but I just was wondering. And what's the criteria for doing a funeral? Just don't call yourself a pastor. Nope. Uh, I told you this last time. Yeah, you said we wasn't inside the church. You just don't say it's a Christian, Christian funeral. It's a Christian funeral. Okay. Do you know what the criteria is for doing a funeral? Uh, we all have it. You have somebody has to ask you to do it. Well, that that's sort of a step in the right direction. You have hey. to be breathing. You have to be breathing. So anyone can do a funeral. Anyone can do it. Yes. And there is a great funeral liturgy in that book of common worship. Mm -hmm. yes. Susan, 
Did, did you do weddings as in your previous? I did. As a judge, lots. Okay, here we go. So the last one was an Orthodox. Um, oh, the baby like face. That. An Orthodox <laughs> baptism, and this this is Orthodox too. <coughs> I think we got it. <coughs> I've been beating up a pastor. Oh my gosh. What? The world knows. I'm not watching. No. I can't stop it though. Okay. Jeez, Louise. I bet if you just disconnect the cord, it's. Is that normal? Move your cursor. Yeah. She just went to another space. No, I didn't. She didn't know that was going to happen. Okay, that is not the way to do an infant baptism. No. Oh, I can keep this one? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so what I want us to see there is that uh, Orthodox baptisms of infants are total immersion, or as you saw that, head and head, shoulders, knees, and toes. Um, but usually Orthodox baptisms are, are, the babies are held like this. The fonts have to be deep enough for a baby to go all the way down under but feet first and head uh, over the head, but totally, total immersion, even of an infant. Oh, That's a great way if they don't puke, they can be part of a church. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I think this is back to where Erica was uh, a while ago talking about five something or other. Mm -hmm. um, and this is what, this is five New Testament metaphors for baptism. Uh, forgiveness of sin, union with Christ, incorporation into the church, reception of the Holy Spirit, and new birth or regeneration. Now think about all those things as we thought, as we uh, listened to the book. Mm -hmm. And let's look at each one just briefly uh, and um, uh, move, move through them pretty quickly. So the first one is forgiveness of sin. Water is a, a, an image of cleansing or washing uh, away of the past. Uh, as we talked about, there are roots of that in the Old Testament. Uh, ritual washings uh, once a month or after touching a dead body. Um, and forgive this idea of washing away the past is not unique to the Christian church. Uh, other religions have this washing um, uh, washing away. Muslims do too. Yeah, yeah, they would go to the, to the river. Um, uh, Peter says, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven. The Nicene Creed says, one baptism for the remission of sins. So baptism is seen as a, a, a Correcting original sin and actual sin. So the original sin being the sin that we're born to in, into just to, because we're humans, and uh, uh, rectifying of our own our own uh, volitions, our own sin. Um, uh, so it's uh, the original and our actual own sin. Now, by the mid time of the Middle Ages, uh, baptism was seen uh, necessary for salvation. So there became this urgency. For babies, uh, remember infant mortality rate higher then than, uh, thank God, what we have now, especially in the United States. But um, uh, baptism was, babies were dying earlier, uh, not surviving past a week or a couple days. So there was this urgency to baptize um, as soon as possible to the point that um, midwives and um, sisters, nuns who were part of that uh, often helping to, to bat, um, deliver babies, uh, were uh, given permission or instructed on how to baptize. Uh, even call the midwife. Call the midwife. Uh, yeah. They do it. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, uh, and even um, now, even today, in some Catholic hospitals that are training uh, nurses, nurses are instructed on how to do baptisms in, for emergency situations. And I've got a woman in my church who her career was a physical therapist, and um, she's been a, a deacon in the church, and, and a, a great deacon. 
And our, our hospital has a, a pastoral care program, a CPE program that she has uh, registered for, she's enrolled in. And uh, the instructor said, just letting you know, you need to be ready uh, in the NICU or the uh, labor and delivery area to do a baptism. And uh, Kathy, this woman came to me and said, what do I do? And like, are they not telling you how to do it or giving you? And they said, no, just be ready, um, which, is, uh, which is a little scary. So we have a, a young woman in the church who's a labor and delivery nurse, and she, and she said, yeah, it happens. We have you know, an infant, um, like once a month, who doesn't make it, or born, born um, not alive. And often, uh, the family, the parents want a, a baptism uh, right then and there. Mm -hmm. That's a heavy um, responsibility. It is a really heavy responsibility, and it's, um, I mean, maybe Susan... Uh, but, you know, when, when I was in seminary, that was kind of like a theological uh, conundrum of what, what do you do when you're asked to, to baptize a, a dead baby? Do you do it or do you not? I mean, do they have infant ministry like they do like older adult ministry? Is there an infant ministry like pastors that will go in and just and be like... That's a good question. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I've never I heard of it. I suspect usually you get the phone call. If you were a commissioned pastor, you'd get the phone call, and you would, despite the fact that the Book of Order says you need session approval and you have to take an elder, I, theoretically, if you could take an elder, you would, but otherwise you just do it. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. You just and, do it. you know, pity the poor session that wouldn't say you did the right thing. Yeah, yeah. 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 Anyway. Um, in baptism, God acts in baptism to wash, forgive, do away with sin, uh, and for others, baptism is a sign that sins are forgiven. So there's a little discrepancy there whether God is doing it at that moment or whether it's a sign of something that has been done. These are answers for you to answer, Andrew. Well, it wasn't a question. It, was, it sounded like one. It was there you go. What did you say? So can't it be both? Mm -hmm. So the other image is uh, union to Christ, death and resurrection. We talked about that with that font or that pool that looked like a, a tomb. A tomb. Oh. Uh, we are baptized into union with Christ's own death and resurrection. We become a priestly people through our death and resurrection, and it's best illustrated by immersion. This is where those traditions have a little head on us. Um, because they, when you go to a baptism by immersion, my guess is that that pastor, that preacher, is going to talk about being dead to sin, yep. mm -hmm. being lowered in the grave, yep. and being raised to new life. Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, he's not making that up. That's Romans six right there, and we we've, we've lost that I think in our tradition of um, infant baptism. <laughs> Now, the Orthodox, they have it because they were putting that baby all the way under. <laughs> uh, so, in, in union to Christ's death, baptism is a blessed dying into, unto sin and a resurrection in the grace of God. That's Luther. That's beautiful, right? Mm -hmm. um, we, we are de dead to the old self and new to the new self. Thank God. Yeah. I'm sorry, did you expect that kind of reaction to that video? Yeah. Yeah. And you showed it anyway? Yeah, of course, yeah. <laughs> so here's from 2 Corinthians. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Yeah. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. I don't know about you. I use those words often on the uh, forgiveness of sin. Um, and once in a while, I, I just will say, are you all actually listening out there? I mean, this, this is incredible, incredible news. Um, Calvin says, through baptism, Christ makes us shares in his death that we may be engrafted in it. Mm -hmm. Calvin. And that right there, so that right oh, there is why there's these hopes, you know? This freedom in Christ, the hope, the, all of that. It's like, man, you don't know me anymore. What? Yeah. In baptism, we are so united to Christ himself that we become shares in all his blessings. Back to Randy's question, or not question, but comment about spirit and Calvin. Calvin believed through the power of the Holy Spirit that we are so united with Christ that it's a mystical union 
as if a husband and a wife are joined together. Which I wish that still held more meaning to folks these days. Well, that's your job. Marriage. No, just to, to recapture all of that, all of this imagery in your preaching and in the way we yeah. lead oh, worship. Yeah. Bug. Mm -hmm. It's a bug. A bug with no light. It's a bug. So the other in it, another image, uh, a metaphor, incorporation in the church. And remember this whole idea of initiation. We were all baptized into one body. We are baptized into Christ. There's no longer Jew or Greek, slave, free, male or female. We're all the same. Baptism is the door. Remember, some of those fonts are by the door. Um, baptism is the door to the church, the means of becoming part of the church. Um, baptism is not a solo affair, but a communal affair. And I guess one of the things that, you know, um, some of, well, all of these images, uh, what can we do to recapture or to re-ignite uh, or find again these, these images in, in our churches? And baptism is an image or metaphor for receiving of the Holy Spirit. Uh, as we talked about in the early church, uh, as a part of baptism, there was anointing with uh, oil and laying on of hands. The, the oil is a sign of the Holy Spirit, uh, uh, the, uh, the image of being um, uh, um, anointed um, by, by the Spirit, the oil. Um, Do you know the story about the oil and the lamb? or how it worked. So, so when the sheep got attacked by the bugs, right, the shepherd would put oil over the, clean it and put oil over it as like a band-aid to protect it mm. so that it would come new again. Mm. And you can metaphor that at, what am I trying to say? Sure, <laughs> yeah. The mm -hmm. sign of protection. Yeah. Uh, so another, another image is that we are born, we are re regenerated, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the spirit. We're born again. Uh, the font is seen as the womb. <clears throat> now, of those, forgiveness of sin, union to Christ's death and resurrection, incorporation into the church, reception of the Holy Spirit, new birth or regeneration. In your experience, which of these five metaphors has been stressed more in your experience? New birth. New birth? Yeah. God, 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 forgiveness and sin. Incorporation. That's neat. <laughs> yeah. Mine was always dying to oneself hmm. or, or being born oh, again into... Which say depends on which time I was baptized. Well, there you go. <laughs> that's, a, there's a, that's powerful. Yeah. Um, so, um, and remember when we talked about the signs, you know, the bouquet of flowers, the uh, at the beginning, one thing didn't just one thing didn't say just one thing. I mean, it said lots of different things, and baptism says lots of different. Now, what do you want? Turn that baby right side up is what I want. <laughs> uh, what do you want the people of the congregation you serve to know or think about with regards to baptism? Okay. This might be crazy. But isn't it a little bit possible based on the life of your church and the individual that are being baptized that you might feel it more appropriate or if God might lead you to emphasize one thing a little more than the others if it was going to lead this person like further on down the road in their journey of faith. Well, yeah, I mean, like if you are baptizing um, an, an eight-week-old versus an 80-year-old who's never been baptized and who's come to the farm, uh, it, it has a different... Yeah. feel to it. It's not a different service. Right. It's not a different thing happening. It's this one Lord, one faith, one, one baptism. But um, 
the, the baby's being incorporated into the body of Christ, the family of Christ, right? Yeah. But for the 80-year-old, certainly there's more of a regeneration for born to reborn, reborn to new life, yeah. um, or remission of sins even. Yeah, yeah that would be big time, I would think. Uh, what about the person that says, can you baptize me after church? You don't really know that person. And if I wanted to just take a, a full picture view, of, of what I would want them to know, right? Generally speaking, I think that it, I think it would have to be two or even threefold. Yet you're going to come into the community, and you're going to die to your to, to the wages of sin. You'd be born yeah. into this. Yeah. Um, for me, I think you know. Yeah, yeah. Nope. You're, you're doing fine. But I also think if they come to you right after worship and say, "I want to be baptized," baptism is not something we do. On our own authority is yeah. it's a it's an action of the session. Yeah. No, and I get that. I, I'm just hypothetical. Not that I'm gonna ever just go, okay, man, here's some water. Because you want to talk to the person, especially right. If, right, all all of the things. But generally speaking, I think you'd have to over the course of the time that you're you're preaching, if, if, to, golly, focus on those things. Right? You could take a more in-depth look. Yeah. Certainly. Right. But I think that's one thing that sets us apart from other churches. When other churches, you come up at the end of the service and say, I want to be baptized, they'd say, let's go to the river. Let's go. Right. Um, yeah, that's true. Don't show an upside down baby. Don't do it. <laughs> see that emblem on the back wall? I'm hoping that we're not going to see that. And that's what? Right. That's our symbol, isn't it? Yeah. 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 I haven't seen it. Oh, that's you! That's him. On behalf of the session, I thank you for your time. Vander, putting your whole trust in the grace and love of Jesus Christ, do you now desire to be baptized? Yay. Do we? Do we as members of the church promise to guide and nurture Xander by word and deed with love and prayer? If so, we do. We do. Will you encourage him to know and follow Christ and to be a faithful member of this church? If so, we will. We will. Allie Martin, Abigail Eflin. So this is a confirmation Lane, Sunday. Caroline Langley. Okay, fast forward. Hey, I ask you these questions. Trusting in the gracious mercy of... <laughs> suffered under conscious pilot, was crucified, he descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins. So she's our clerk of session. And these two lit and women in the back are the leaders of the confirmation. I don't know why the girls stood on one side and the boys stood on the other. The Red Rover. <laughs> you see the girls back up? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Too much water being splashed. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks. Blessed are you, O Lord our God. In countless ways, from generation to generation, you reveal your great love for the world and bless us with signs of your grace. We praise you that through the waters of the sea, you led your people Israel out of bondage into the freedom of your promised land. We praise you for sending Jesus Christ, your son, and for the baptism of his death and resurrection through which you set us free from sin and death. We praise you for the gift of your Holy Spirit given to all nations and all peoples, so that all who call on your name may be saved. 
Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon this your water, that this font may be your womb of new birth. May all who pass through these waters be delivered from death to life, from bondage to freedom, from sin to new life. Bind them to the household of faith and guard them from all evil. Strengthen them to serve you with joy until the day you make all things new. Through the Lord Jesus Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, we bless you, God of glory, now and forever. Amen. Xander Owen, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Xander, child of the covenant, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. At this time, I invite parents of the confirmands to come forward for the laying on of hands as they kneel and ask the whole congregation to stand and extend your hands as a sign of our community together. That was beautiful. Yeah. Now, are the girls expected to wear white, or they just did? They, no one ever says, I mean, they always like, what do we wear, what do we wear? I'm like, you know, just what, wear what you want. Um, and they just somehow okay. all show up in white. Really kind of interesting because that would have been in the in the early church they would have been wearing white. So good, 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 good um, call there. So in the early church, um, and not even just the early church, but well on into the church. Um, I wish I had I have slides of this, but um, so you know the Leaning Tower of Pisa. The Leaning Tower of Pisa is a bell tower of, of the church, uh, and the church sits here, and uh, outside of the church is this huge dome building, which is the baptistry. And what happened in the church is that people would go into the baptistry from one side, uh, clothes would be stripped all the way off, and they would be baptized naked. Uh, in the early church, women were baptized by women, men were baptized by men. Uh, by, by Pisa, that was no longer the case. But um, in the early church, they were stripped naked and baptized, and then when they came out of the water, they were clothed in, in the new garment, the new white garment, uh, um, which we'll talk about when we talk about funerals, too, because um, that'll come back to not haunt us. That's not the right word with, when we're talking about funerals, but um, we'll talk about uh, the, being clothed in Christ uh, with funerals, too. Uh, anything you saw there? I like the fact that it was okay for you to have the folder and, and actually just read from it. Because a lot of times, um, it would be easy to forget the words or the flow or the whatever, and it, and it seemed appropriate. That was a lot to memorize. I was gonna say, I don't think I've ever seen astronauts. Yeah. yeah. Really? But now you've typed everything up and put it in a bigger book than the Book of Common Worship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, well, I can't tell you what I have. I mean, I can tell you if I have. I could tell you if I knew. Um, it's not that I can't tell you what I have, but um, I have an electronic. I mean, I have a, the thumb Book thumb of Common Worship on a thumb drive, right. mm -hmm. and you can just pull it. Um, and I probably, I used to type it all out, and now I just pull it and, and, and print it in color with the red and the colors and everything. Um, I should have brought that to show you how, because um, like on new members, when we receive new members, I'll leave a blank uh, where it <laughs> says, uh, um, where Terry, the clerk, um, has, will say on behalf of the session I present, uh, and during, we'll write the names in uh, using it you know, with our hand. And going back to your earlier question, I mean, I realize you asked it at the seven here, but I would answer that. Which, what was the question? About what would I want my congregation to know. Oh, yeah, yeah. Know. I would want them to know this, that God acts in baptism, which is why we only do it once. 
Just well, like, you don't have to look at me. I'm very vulnerable. <laughs> <laughs> it was not meant to be personal. You were looking at me, so I looked at you. <laughs> I think I was trying to absorb some wisdom by osmosis or something. <laughs> Andrew, uh, I, like I said, I'm serious when I said it a while ago. I think you should write your your journey down, and maybe you have, mm-hmm. because you know to say that each baptism is different and means different. I'm at different places. Um, I'm glad I am where I am now. You uh, notice how he fed that to you. Mm-hmm. This is the this is the baptism I should have. Uh, no, 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 because you you've <laughs> not been baptized as a Presbyterian. Mm-hmm. No, they accepted me as based right. on me. Yeah, I've already been having been baptized. Mm-hmm. So if somebody comes to us and says. Uh, I think I was baptized. My mom always told me I was baptized. I don't remember that I was baptized. We as a church would say, you've been baptized. We would never, we would never, there's not a session, I shouldn't say this, there should not be a session that would ever say, we will baptize you again. We just do not do that. I couldn't say reaffirm their baptism. Right. They want to. And that was my question. Could you say, obviously you're not going to say, that's that stuff, jump in the pool. But could you offer that? If, if you're not comfortable with that, would you like to reaffirm? Could you say that, or do you just wait until they think of it on their own? So when, when we become, when we receive members in the church, they are basically doing what those kids just did. Mm-hmm. They are, do you once again reaffirm your faith in Jesus Christ? Yes, I do. Mm-hmm. Remember your and <clears throat> part of the service says remember your baptism and be thankful. So God doesn't need to reaffirm. So he's already done it. They're just reaffirming it for their own. That's what I'm saying. There's Would you service, offer that there's service? There's a service of reaffirmation of yeah. baptism, right? That you don't. I mean, some churches would like use branches and spray throw water. Some churches would have a glass more bead. I mean, you know what I mean, the round, the, the glass piece that you would pull out of the water and take with you as a reminder of your baptism, mm-hmm. but you don't put water on them in the forehead, on the head, mm-hmm. or, or dunk them again. Now, we, it, we have, um, uh, on, you, often on Baptism of the Lord Sunday, which is mm-hmm. the first Sunday in January-ish, um, have a renewal of baptism, or sometimes on Pentecost, and invite people to come to the font, but we'll have, um, we've got double aisles in the balcony, so we'll have water at the head of both aisles and in the balcony, and invite people to touch the water and remember their baptism, and even if they want to, for them to take water. Uh, So one of the things that Luther did every day of his life was he took water, if he had water, if not, he licked his thumb and made the sign of the cross on his forehead and said, I have been baptized. And so it's a reminder that, yes, God has done it. I remember, I don't remember, but I remember that I have been baptized. And all of those images, since are gone. Somebody tells you, I don't remember it, therefore I want to do it again. Would you still do the reaffirmation or would you do the whole thing? So you, we do not rebaptize and we don't baptize again. Our services offer a service for uh, renewal of baptism with an individual or a congregation. So one thing would be to talk about, and I think, I mean, I think that's where a conversation with the person, and you said, you know, somebody comes up after church. I think that would open the door for an opportunity for a conversation to talk about what is, what, where are you in your faith journey? Where do you remember being baptized? Were you baptized as a baby? Were you baptized as a nine-year-old? Where are you now? And what does water mean for you? What does that act mean for you? And again, we remember that we've been baptized. And my sense is that it's the folks coming to you from a tradition other than Presbyterian that would normally be wanting to be rebaptized right. because that's been their experience. Right. In those other denominations. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I have this feeling like I may have talked to someone about uh, do I need to get baptized again? Or 
because I'm in a different church. And, you know, I probably ventured down that path a little bit, and there were, I don't know that I got as good of an explanation as what we've just done, but uh, I you know. Yeah. Well, it's just like, I, I know you guys agree, you know what, especially for, at this point in our journey, uh, you don't want to do it wrong, and you no. don't want to ever turn anybody off from why we do what we're doing. So all these questions, you guys have lack of experience, because, again, we just don't want to screw it up. Right, yeah. And that's why you're here. Yeah. Well, and I've had people who have been ALPs who would say, can we baptize? And I will say no. Because somebody's asked mm -hmm. them, and I think it's easier for me to tell them they have to say no than maybe for them to say no. So remind me this tier. Authorized lay preachers are pulpit supply. Okay. They do not have a covenant like the commission pastors do. Okay. So they serve as pulpit supply. And in this presbytery, after this course, we also authorize them to preside at communion. Okay. But we've made provisions for ruling elders in our churches who are go through a preparation training program to be authorized to preside at their, their church membership. Because we have a lot of small churches that don't have regular pastoral membership. Right. So after this class, these folks will be able to preside after at the finish, table. After they finish, all, they, after they get through November, have their exam done and their psychological assessment. Oh, right. All then, of that. All of that done. Then, yes. But They'll the be able to preside is, at the table. Right. And the goal is that at the February Presbytery meeting, you all would be authorized to preside at communion. At so any then what, church, like those of us that are going to, what, finish? If you're, yeah, at any church. As an authorized lay preacher, you can preside. And then the next step is what? Commission pastor. And what, ha what, what has to happen between February and that? A call to a church? Mm -hmm. Well, no, they finished, there's another year, another nine months to this program after they finish level two. But there's not another worship class. No, because we put both worship classes in the second year. Last time it was, or, yeah, or two times ago it was, worship was one year, sacraments, weddings, and funerals were a second year, a different year, but then that meant those that, if we had some that chose not to take all three, you don't have to complete all three mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You just, if you want to be a commissioned pastor, you do. And so it was decided that we ought to have the sacraments course in this year so that people didn't have to come back another course to get the sacraments. Because so we only had six classes next year. You do, but then you have a summer practicum. And then, um, and then... I love you, Susan. And then to do weddings? <laughs> to do weddings, you have to be a commissioned pastor and have the authority of the estate. The only thing that commission, the only thing that authorized lay preachers can do is random supply preach and preside at communion. And funerals. And funerals. Mm -hmm. But they can't moderate sessions, they can't do weddings, they can't do baptisms. So what do you have to do what, for these folks to the, as far as the state is concerned? Uh, they have to do what, I, what a minister would have to do, which is basically go to the courthouse, probably show up with a certificate that you're commissioned, mm -hmm. and the state will say, okay, I think, I don't know if they still make you pay your money or not. At one point in time, it was 25 bucks. Yeah, yes. To do what? To do weddings? To do weddings. Yeah. Susan probably knows about that. this more than anybody, right? Yeah. You mean weddings well, outside of the Presbytery? Mm -mm. I could do them because I was a judge. Right, but I mean as far as, like, I just, um, well, the thing that, you, we can talk about this when we do weddings, but uh, when we talk about weddings, but, um, well, just, I'll say it briefly now, but um, in Maryland, every county is different from every other county. Mm -hmm. Um, Virginia is not like that. So when I moved to Virginia in 1995 to serve a church, I had to go to the courthouse with my certificate of ordination That's what I had to do. and show them that I had been ordained. So um, I, I had to go to the well, I did a wedding in Virginia, and I had to go to the courthouse in that specific county. So I just that was in Southern Virginia, uh, six miles from North Carolina. So I was uh, asked to do a wedding. Actually, I volunteered to do a wedding in August of this year in Winchester, which is a whole different county. Mm -hmm. The thing to do is you have to call ahead. So, um, so I called ahead, like six months ahead, and said, I've been asked to do a wedding. What do I need to do? And they said, you need to come here with your ordination certificate or li license or whatever. And I said, well, what if I was um, commissioned or approved in another county in Virginia, and they said, if they have a record of it, we'll accept it. So this was 1995 and 2023. Oh, I called the county 
in Southern Virginia and said, I arrived there in 1995. And they said, do you have any idea what month? And I said, August. And they said, give me a second. And they went and they came back and I can just see them doing this in a file drawer somewhere. And they said, yep, we'll send it to you. We've got copies here. And, right. and so the um, Winchester County or city <laughs> accepted it. I made all kind of copies. I put it in the glove compartment. <laughs> but when I got the, um, to, to, to do the wedding, on the license, the wedding license from the couple, in big black bold letters, it said, if you have not been approved by this county, stop now. And see, for us, once you register in your, in your own county, you are good, good for the state. Good state, good for the yeah. state. But what I think that was trying to do was to cut down on, I think there are probably a lot of people who are married who are not well, in, Legal. Tennessee, in Tennessee, when I did my sister's wedding, all I had to do was tell them I was ordained. I didn't have to show them anything. Yeah, yeah, I think that's pretty much the way it is in Maryland. Okay. We're, we're, we the other thing about baptism is be sure it's recorded in your, in your church record book. Because this past year, I had a father call me because his son was married a Catholic. He was baptized in the early 70s, and they needed to know that he was baptized. Yeah. We get calls, not all the time, but throughout the year, I, same situation. A lot of Catholic marrying a Catholic, and they have to have proof that they're marrying a Christian. Um, and, and, and baptismal certificates serve as legal documents to prove birth, mm -hmm. to prove, um, yeah, so mm -hmm. they're very important. So is, is that why when I serve communion, I'm only serving at Riverlawn until I finish the ALP, then I can serve at any Presbyterian like, church? Because you've already been through the preparation program. But that's only for Riverlawn. That's only for Riverlawn. Right, and then yes. after ALP, I could do it if I was visiting another church. Right. I understand. Right. Okay. And when you do weddings, be sure to fill out the paperwork because one of the funniest weddings I ever did as a judge was a couple who were applying for passports and they had been married for 20 years. And they went to get their marriage certificate and it had not been recorded by the, the minister that did it and he had since passed away. Oh, and you have oh, a no. week to get that in. Right? Yeah, yeah. And if you don't, it's on you. Yeah. Right. Yeah, we can talk about that, but... Um... I get scared every time, and that's when we when you when we looked at the handshake. It's a legal thing. It's a it's a, a mm -hmm. function of the state, and and essentially when a, when a couple comes to you with their marriage license, all that the state cares that you do is sign that document. Mm -hmm. They don't care what you say, what you don't say. They just want that document signed by somebody that's yep. that's. I think in West Virginia. You have to include the piece that indicates you were there of your own volition. Oh, see, I don't even know that. There's a there's a wedding rite, I guess would be the best way to, to describe it, in state code. Huh. What does that mean, a wedding rite in state code? It tells you what to say. Oh. It'd be interesting to compare to that to, um, yeah. you know, the Book of Common yeah, Worship. Book of Common Worship. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, because it's. I mean, there's a statement in here that covers that in the Book of Common Worship. Well, it's the the Declaration of Intent, yes. uh, which is the only time that you say "I do." Uh, basically, do you really want to go through with this? <laughs> yes, I do. Yeah. Um, do you desire to enter the covenant in marriage? That's what you have to ask. Interesting. I'll, I'll pull the one from the code. Yeah, I'd like to see that. Because uh, when after this same year sex done, marriage became legal in West Virginia, I had a couple that showed up very shortly no, after that, that would be commissioned. and they okay. hadn't changed the wording, and so oh, I had to figure out could, on the fly what they were saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, remind me to talk about that, too, because we've got... Uh, yeah, I've got one up because of all the work I do with pulpit supplies. We're ahead of schedule. Yay. Hey. What? Don't say that out loud. That's the first time I've ever had for this class. Now we'll just never shut up. Oh, wait, that's just me. All right, let's go home or wherever we're going. Yeah. Who wants to close the prayer? Yes. Let me turn this.